a pie, touched the ground, stomped my feet, and I turned around. One, two, woo, woo, praise the Lord. Jump and dance, go my might. Might look funny, but that's all right. Got to woo, woo, praise the Lord. Reach up high, touch the ground, stomp my feet and I turn around. God do, woo, woo, praise the Lord. Jump and dance with all my might, might look funny but that's alright. God do, woo, woo, praise the Lord. I'll do anything just for my Lord. He's done everything for me. Doesn't matter who is looking on. Jesus is the person that I want to please. So reach a pipe, touch the ground. Turn around, God do woo, woo, praise the Lord. Jump and dance with all my might. Might look funny, but that's all right. God do woo, woo, praise the Lord. May my whole life be a song of praise. Worship you in every way In the song, the actions pray your name Want my actions every day to do the same So reach my touch the ground Storm my feet and I turn around God to woo -woo, praise the Lord Jump and dance with all my might. Might look funny, but that's all right. God do, woo -woo, praise the Lord. I've got to, woo -woo, praise the Lord. I've got to, woo -woo, praise the Lord. All right, so we just have to praise our God, right? And that's why we're here. And that's why we're singing all these songs. The reason is that we are praising God. All right, let's sing one more song. I think many of you know this song. Some may not be knowing it. Some may be knowing this as a new song. So we learn it also. Manokal, what is this song called? It's called 10,000 Reasons. 10,000 Reasons. Okay. So let's sing that. Before me, 
Let me be singing when the evening Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Father, we come to your presence this evening. You are a merciful God. You're a God who has compassion over us. And you give us your mercy even when we don't deserve it, O oh Lord. There are times when we have disobeyed your commands. There are times when we have strayed away from your path. But still, you never stop showing us mercy. It is your mercy that attracts us towards you. It is your mercy that saves us. It is your mercy that leads us to all truth. This evening, Lord, we pray that you would show us mercy as we study the scriptures together. Help us to understand your word and to apply it in our lives. The truth of God's word would sink deep into our hearts. Like the good seed that was sown into the good soil, it would take deep root and would bear much fruit, O oh Lord Father. It would bring joy to your heart, O oh Master. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, so welcome back and let's head down to the Gospel of Mark. I hope you got your Bibles ready and you have to turn with me to one of the most important passages ever to be recorded in the Bible. It is so important that all the four Gospels mention it. The only other thing that the four Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John wrote about is the cross of Jesus Christ, how Jesus died. Okay. But here, this is also equally important. That's why all four of them have written about it. And that is the feeding of the 5,000. How Jesus fed 5,000 people. Um, sir, what chapter is it? I'm going to tell you. Mark chapter 6 and verses 30 to 44. Mark chapter 6 verses 30 to 44. Okay, that's our passage. 
quickly turn to it and i will give you the parallel passages that in in the other bible gospel stories where this uh, event comes okay so once you read all the other passages then the whole event will be quite clear to everyone right so here i am in the chat box you can find the parallel passages for this passage it's found in matthew's gospel chapter 14 luke's gospel chapter 9 and john chapter 6 the verses are also given there you can just copy it directly from the chat box all right so i put the list over there mark chapter 6 verses 30 to 44 is what we are studying but only if you read all the four passages matthew mark luke and john then only you understand the full picture of what happened on that day right so let's go right into the text text i'm reading from my bible you can follow it in your bible here we go the apostles returned to jesus and told him all that they had done and taught and he said to them come away by yourself to a desolate place and rest a while for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat and they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves now many saw them going and recognized them and Excuse they ran excuse me there. manu uncle yes could you repeat mark 6 was was is 30 to 44 it's in the chat box no i didn't write that in the chat box okay mark chapter 6 verses 32 okay. 44 okay i just i just put that also there in the chat box okay that's what we are studying now all right here we go so i i already read four verses so verse 34 when he had he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he was he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things and when it grew late his disciples came to him and said this is a desolate place and the hour is now late send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat but he answered them you give them something to eat and they said to him shall we go and buy 200 dinari worth of bread and give it to them to eat and he said to them how many loaves do you have go and see and when they had found out they said five and two fish then he commanded them to all to sit down in groups on the green grass so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties and taking the five loaves and two fish he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people and he divided the two fish among them all and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish and those who ate the loaves were 5000 men wow all right so the bible clearly says that jesus amazingly miraculously fed 5000 men so you should actually think they can't be just men there be others also like women will be there and children also would be there so they did not count the women and the children because the number would be too huge but they also ate and they also were satisfied so when counted maybe you know the heads of families were counted and 5000 men were there so including the ladies maybe say another 1000 ladies were there or you know another 500 children were there it could easily go up to maybe 6500 people altogether okay but definitely the number given there is 5000 men so more than 5000 people were fed in this one miracle and that's why it is recorded in all the four gospels okay it's as important in jesus life it is as important as the cross of christ right so that's why they they thought it was very important that they should all record it now let's look at this passage the verse 30 says the apostles returned to jerusalem and told him all that where did they return from see they were sent out by jesus to preach and to teach and to cast out demons and to heal people you remember that mark chapter 6 was 7 to 13 mark chapter 6 verses 7 to 13 okay i hope you got that all right i'll just put it in the chat box again mark chapter 6 was a 7 to 13 okay that is the passage which we studied where jesus had given them authority and power and sent them out to preach to heal and of course to cast out demons okay so this had happened they all went out two by two and they all were coming back now they were returning to jesus so they finished the work that jesus had given them and they came back to jesus so that's what return to means and he told them they told him all that they had done and taught they gave a feedback no they gave a feedback of what all they did who all they met 
what did they do what was the biggest challenges you know just like how we had this game and then we were discussing you know which was the toughest word for you which was the hardest one and what did you find you know like that we give a feedback and they gave a feedback of all that happened when they went out and jesus was so amazed jesus was so impressed with what they had done but he also saw that they were tired they were exhausted they had done so much of hard work so jesus wanted to spend some time alone with them that's why he says in verse 31 he said to them come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while come away okay. come away means away from all the work that you have been doing let's take a break let's take a holiday let's take a rest time no so come away means away from the work that you have been doing let's take a break secondly to a desolate place desolate place means where nobody else is there only the disciples and jesus they wanted to spend some time alone from the crowds you see so a desolate place let's go to a quiet place let's go where the crowds are not there and finally rest a while see body and mind are exhausted you need to be refreshed you need to be strengthened so body mind and our spirit needs to be refreshed so rest is a solution that god has for our weary bodies no when you're tired your body and your mind you need rest everybody needs rest at night we take rest when you go to sleep you know people take rest there was this news article that came in the newspaper some time back a boy was so interested in playing video games that he kept on playing games daytime evening night time during this lockdown he kept on playing over and over and over again he forgot to have his food he forgot to have his bath and what happened as he was playing there he got a cardiac he got a heart attack and they took him to the hospital young boy you see and he was playing so much without rest that he got a heart attack and he was taken to the hospital and there he died why because he did not give his mind and body rest see everybody needs rest god shows us an example in the time of creation you know six days he created everything and on the seventh day the bible says god rested okay god does, god never gets tired he is god after all and i don't think god takes a break like you know god says okay i'm not i'm not i'm just going to take rest i'm going to sleep no god does not do that if god goes to sleep the whole universe will crash so so god never takes rest but he showed us an example he said he stopped all work of creation and he's he just rested okay so which means that man also needs to take rest if that is the example that god wants us to follow six days you can work six days you can slog but one day you need to give your body and your mind rest that is when your spirit gets strengthened when you sit in god's presence and you study the word of god that time your your spirit gets built up encouraged strengthened okay when you pray when you pray and you know spend some time in god's presence that's when your spirit is strengthened but your mind and body needs to take rest how do you get that maybe by you know just sleeping just going for a walk maybe by playing some games you know all different ways are there to rest Okay. so you can just take a break from your routine job or routine work maybe your class work maybe your homework everything and give your mind and body rest otherwise a man is going to be burnt out is going to be exhausted in no time if he does not take rest so jesus wanted his disciples to take rest so he tried to find a desolate a quiet place where no none of the crowds would disturb them away from all the work what happened for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat imagine that you know people don't have time even to eat so busy sometimes you know we are more busy than god is right some of us are more busier than the prime minister or or uh, the president of the country right i know they are all busy people but some of us are even more busier than that no time no time no time fully fully occupied no you can't be that you need to take time to especially to eat you know some people eat uh, food and at the same time they are eating food they'll be looking at the mobile they'll be looking at the tv they'll be looking at the multitasking when you are eating food also no you got to take rest you got to enjoy your food if you are eating food you have to focus on the food and taste it and eat it otherwise your body will not absorb it completely it will not absorb it properly no you will not become healthy your eyes will be occupied with the tv and your hands will be occupied with the mobile and your other hand will be occupied with the eating you are not focusing on the food so that's not the healthy way to eat food also right sometimes so, watch tv while i eat yes sometimes watching is okay matthew but uh, you know the problem is that when we get so uh, you know addicted to the tv you lose focus of what you are eating you know 
sometimes you eat things which you're not supposed to eat like for example spiders okay you might find a spider fall into your plate and you won't see it because you're looking at the tv and you just take the you know next piece and you think oh that's a that's nice my chicken has got eight legs and you keep on pulling on each of these legs and it's actually not the chicken you're actually eating the spider you see so things like that can happen so let's not let's not lose focus of what you're doing one thing at a time that would be great i've so, kind of got used to it i've been doing it since i was a little kid ah so time to burst the bubble right so that, that that's actually not a good habit to watch tv and then eat okay finish your watching and then eat or eat your food and then watch tv so you eat fast so that you don't want to miss the tv thing right so yes give your eyes some rest that's the whole idea okay your eyes also strain you are online in class and you attend the online classes and all that your eyes are also straining one of the sure signs that you know that your eyes are a straining is when your eyes become dry when you watch this online stuff you no know? so you need more water in your eyes you should be blinking more and when people don't blink their eyes more the eyes strain and you get headaches you get all kinds of vision problems and some people are actually start wearing glasses from childhood see mana and anna see they have glasses even right now right so you no know, they they not they don't strain their eyes but they just got it because they like wearing glasses okay so there are many people who actually have vision problem and they do wear glasses but uh, some people actually over strain it you know people who watch tv more people who play games more and when you're playing games don't sit too close to the tv monitor you know you're watching the whole game close up 3d and then what happens your eyes lose their sight so by the time you're 30 or 40 you will be going blind so make sure that you give rest to your eyes okay now because i'm using the tv so much i have this medicine which doctor has given me he says your eyes will become so dry so i have to put this medicine in my eye you know once or twice each day so that my eyes will be you know moisturized so that's that's a good thing to do if you are using too much tv i use also glasses for my tv monitor so that my eyes don't get too much strain so god wants us to take rest give body your body rest give your mind rest so that you can take some time to eat time to enjoy the things that god has blessed us with so let's look at what they did and they went away in a boat to a desolate place by themselves see they took a boat and they took a break see they went on a on a trip to a quiet place maybe jesus uh, is, uh, would have asked one of his disciples where can we go for a break and they would have said oh let's go let's go to that park or let's go to that museum you know where there is so much of uh, greenery let's just sit there so they they maybe took the boat to some place like that but then what happened something very very sad happened verse 33 now many saw them going and recognized them and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them see guys were very smart they wouldn't allow jesus and his disciples to take the break they reached that park or that place where they were visiting before them and they were waiting well, imagine the look on the on the disciples face when they saw the whole crowd standing in that place no they were oh no who informed these guys why did these guys follow us all the way here we thought of spending some quiet time with jesus and here these fellows you know who oh, what what to say about them they are they are too much they are in, in uh, they are interfering in our privacy they they don't allow us to be alone with jesus for a little time look at these horrible fellows you know they ran on foot and reached there before the boat reached there they reached ahead of them when he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them but jesus did not behave like that he did not behave like he did not think like how the others would have thought he saw them with compassion why bible says because they were like sheep without a shepherd many of us are not used to seeing uh, a shepherd you know because these days we don't have any shepherds around us but uh, you know if you go still to north india and all you'll find a lot of places in the villages where there are shepherds they take hundreds of sheep and they go into the wilderness jungles and they feed the sheep and they take care of the sheep and they bring them back after 2 3 days a shepherd will take care of maybe 150 to 100 sheep and uh, he will have other shepherds also to help him and all these shepherds go together into the forest they protect the sheep they take care of the sheep and they bring it back now imagine a sheep cannot survive without the shepherd because sheep does not have sharp claws sheep does not have sharp teeth so if an animal attacks the sheep the sheep can't fight back you see sheep can only uh, you know cry with all its might and the animal will just rip it to pieces so 
if a shepherd is not there to protect the sheep the sheep is without direction you know when where to go how to go to get back to their house how to get back to the sheep and the sheep doesn't know sheep are like you know totally dependent on the shepherd now here when jesus was looking at the crowd of people they felt like sheep without a shepherd they had no clue what to do what not to do they didn't know how to how to find god they didn't know how to listen to his commands they didn't know how, what about the word of god they had no idea about anything and jesus felt compassion on them see jesus felt like he should teach them something and so he started teaching them he started sharing with them see so he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things maybe they ask questions from the word of god like how you guys ask questions and they jesus started replying just started answering their doubts so many many things they were doing jesus had all compassion for those people and then when it grew late his disciples you know they were standing by and they were watching the whole thing i said come on it was our time and they made it our time see it was a lo- alone time with jesus and they made it a crowd time again they were very much upset so they wanted to somehow get rid of the crowd so they came to jesus and they told him uh see it's getting late now these fellows you know they'll be hungry right this is a desolate place and the hour is now late send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat see it looks like they had compassion on these they also had compassion maybe they had concern over them let them also get some food let them go to the village you know nearby and get some food no they actually wanted to get rid of the crowd okay so that was their whole idea send them away so that we can actually be alone send them away we don't care about what happens to them uh, in the gospel of john jesus says they are very tired if they if i send them away like this they will fall on the ground some people will not reach their homes they will fall exhausted on the ground so jesus turns to the disciples and tells them you give them something to eat i'm not going to send them away now they are not going to find any food because it's too late so there will be no tattagadas there will be no restaurants open now there will be no bakeries so let's give them something to eat that's what jesus said he answered them you give them something to eat now that was a big fix for the apostles because they didn't have enough food for everybody in fact they did not have any food stored up for that day itself so they were completely out of food all right turn with me to the gospel of john and chapter 6 gospel of john chapter 6 verses 5 and 6 okay gospel of john chapter 6 verses 5 and 6 i'll put it in the chat box so that you can find it there it says because jesus said this it was actually a test for apostle philip it was a test for philip jesus wanted to see what what philip would do in a situation like this when jesus said you give them something to eat philip was like oh no how am i going to give them something to feed if if i had to feed this 5000 people i have to get so much of money and then take this money to the shop and get so much of food so that these many people can eat their food so philip started calculating the cost and then he answered this you know he said uh, where am i going to buy 200 dinari worth of bread and give it to them to eat so, dinari is the coin sorry dinari is the coin that they use over there and the question was how am i going to get so much money so that i can go and get so much of food and then i can feed these people so philip was saying jesus was saying feed them instead of saying no food now he is saying no money also we have no money and no food so he added to the problem one more problem no money problem okay so only the problem was no food but now new problem has come out no money no money no food no feeding the people see so they were helpless they didn't have anything to eat they didn't have anything to give to those people also but what did jesus do he already knew that what he was going to do see so that's why it was a test for philip he knew that philip is going to fail that test but then there was this boy who was there the gospel of john says the disciple called andrew found one boy who had a lunch with him one mother had sent carefully one packet food with this boy he had five loaves of bread and two fish amazing one mother who was so compassionate of his of his child had of her child had actually sent five loaves of bread and two fish and that was this boy's lunch but andrew found it and the boy happily gave it up for the crowd you see now the other disciples would i looked at andrew and said what is this going to do for 5000 people 
you you know maybe andrew looked like a big bully to them because he took the lunch box of this poor boy so said why you would you take a young boy's lunch box see i hope you don't have bullies like that in your school right who come and take your lunch box and eat your food you take you know maybe you will take a omelet to school and this bully will come and open your lunch box and eat only the omelet see or the chicken that your mother lovingly gave you for your lunch the bully will come open the lunch box and take that chicken piece and eat it and you have to you eat raw chapati or raw rice alone right so that sometimes that's i mean that has happened to me oh yeah i can imagine that and i think i mean you you are that bully who took somebody's food and ate it no 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 okay oh, okay, okay somebody took that your food and ate it bully took my food and ate it <laughs> i thought you were confessing that you took somebody's food okay no problem right so that's the wrong thing to do right so andrew was doing the wrong thing no this boy actually gave up his food so that somebody could eat it somebody who was maybe in more need than him right so andrew gave this food to jesus and jesus took what little they gave and what did jesus do he says uh, and they they found out they said five and two fish then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass all the crowd the 5000 people were supposed to sit in 50s and 100s on the grass so they sat down in groups by 100s and by 50s taking the five loaves and the two fish he looked up to heaven what is he doing he was thanking god the father for giving them food now i don't know how many of us thank god for the food see the food that you eat maybe have been you know the the rice may have been cultivated in somewhere in tamil nadu or karnataka or somewhere and they pack it up they clean it up and they harvest it they pack it up in sacks and they load it up on some lorry or truck and it comes all the way across the border kali kavala parasala all that places and it comes to trivandrum and then that whole uh, uh, lot sir, goes in, yes. how uh, how um, on groups of what did the crowd sit on the grass groups of 50s and 100s 50 numbers okay a group of 50 numbers and group of 100 numbers that's how they sat on the grass okay so so imagine this truck has come to east fort now then goes to chale market and then you know they load up all those rice there and then uh, the small small packets of rice will come from there to the supermarket or the shop near your house and then your parents go for shopping and they find out that you don't have enough rice at home so they buy one sack of rice and they bring it home and your mother cooks it or your father cooks it and then the rice is made and then it comes to your table you don't know anything about the process from the time this rice was you know on in the field for till the time the rice reached your table see only thing you know is this movement from the table to the mouth um yum yum very good right so before you eat the food always understand that god moved it all the way away from that farmer's place right into your, onto your dining table the food has reached you which means god has provided you with your daily bread your daily food you see so every time you have any food thank god thank god that many are there who don't get the food but he has he has mercifully provided you with food jesus shows us the example he first lifted up that food you know the food did not belong to this boy it did not belong to his mother it did not belong to anybody there the food actually was given to them by <laughs> god himself by god himself okay so he lifted up his eyes towards heaven and thank god for the food that they have got the five loaves of bread and two fish and then he gave it to the disciples and said break it and and supply and the disciples they did it and the food never got over it multiplied and it multiplied and it multiplied and it multiplied everybody started eating and the food was good food they ate and they were satisfied you know sometimes you know when you go to a hotel or something and you eat idli it is like oh man you can't even chew the idli you know it's very hard idli or sometimes when you have some fish curry or uh, you know fish fry it's tasting very odd very, uh, you don't feel like eating it but here the food was very tasty everybody had it and everybody was satisfied okay so the food was good they all ate it and the fish five loaves and two fish there was broken there was blessed and broken and it was supplied by the disciples to everyone and they all ate it and were satisfied see so god provides the food god provides us with satisfaction see god gives us all the desires that we have all the necessity needs that you have suppose we need clothing who gives you the clothing god gives you the dresses who gives you the house god gives you the house who gives you anything that you have education 
parents, home, family, everything is given by God. And so there are so many reasons why we have to be thankful to God. No? So here, these people, they were satisfied. And what happened? Jesus would not like anything to be wasted. So they collected all the remaining food also, see? So there are times when, you know, we waste things. Sometimes we waste food. We say, oh, I don't like that food, so I'm not going to eat it. And then what do you do? You throw it into the waste bin. See, Once I was traveling through Chennai, you know, that's where I was studying when I was in my college time. When I was studying in Chennai, I used to travel by bus. And near the bus stand, you know, I'll find a lot of young children who are homeless children. They don't have a house. They don't have parents. They are orphans. Some of them have run away from their homes and they have reached this bus stand. And they have been there in the bus stand for many days. They haven't had food for the last many days. And I saw some of these boys actually digging into the waste bin and eating dirty food. You know, dirty food means rotten food, food that is full of worms. But these guys want something to eat. And so they'll take this rotten food and they eat it. That was such a painful sight for me. And I was thinking, Lord, if only I had some money to give them some food to eat. And you might see that, you know, around you, there might be people who are in need. So when you are throwing away food, understand that there are so many people who don't have a meal to eat, the food to eat. See, so Jesus did not want any food to be wasted. It is a crime to waste food. You're actually, you know, mocking God when you actually waste food. So if you have blessed the food in your plate, you know, take into your plate only what you would eat and make sure that you finish that food that you have taken. You know? Otherwise, if you waste food, it is like dishonoring God who provided that food. You know? so, Jesus wanted the leftovers to be collected. And how many, how many baskets did they collect? 12 baskets full of broken pieces. Now, very coincidentally, you'll find the number of disciples is also 12. The apostles are 12 in number. And each one of them had to carry one basket. You know, Because they are the ones who went and told Jesus, send them away. Now, Jesus said, now you carry 12 baskets. See, So 12 of them would have to carry the leftover food baskets. So no partiality there. Everybody will get one full basket. So they have to carry it. Maybe they carried it on their head. So just to remind them. So next time, don't say that to people. You know? Show compassion. So 12 baskets full of broken pieces of food and fish. They collected back. Then the Bible reminds us that the number of people who had food that day was 5,000 men. Okay, 5,000 men. Right. So God, what, what, what do we understand from this passage? We understand many, many things from this passage. The little that you give to God, God can bless it and multiply it for many people. So we think, okay, what can one person do? What can one person's things do? But God takes that one little thing that you give to God and he will bless it and make it a blessing for many, many people. The little that you and I give. You know, sometimes we go to church and we put our offerings, right? And many times we put only coins. Maybe we put one rupee or 10 rupee or 20 rupees. or Maybe we put 100 rupees. But that's just the money that you put into the offering. God can take that one rupee or the hundred rupee that you put and make it a blessing for many people. It does not matter how much you give. Give the best that you can give and God will take it and use it as a blessing for many. Okay, There was this, there was this boy who was actually living in Russia. Uh, in the bar, uh, no, Actually not proper Russia. He was in Ser Serbia, okay, so somewhere near Russia. Now, now it's not part of Russia. So that time when he was going to church over there, a missionary was there and he was taking clothes and food items to Africa. And he was visiting the church and he asked everybody, you know, would you like to contribute to this need? There are so many hungry children. We are ministering to them in Africa. And would you like to contribute to that? So everybody, many of them, you know, they had so much money. They gave to this missionary and the missionary collected a lot of old clothes a lot of food items, a lot of money to be taken to the poor people in the place that he's ministering in Africa. And as he was ready to go, there was this one boy who came running and he said, please take this. This is my most precious teddy bear. You know, It's the most precious teddy bear. But I want to give it to some child in Africa that that child would be blessed with this. And so the, 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 the pastors and the elders who were there in the church said, no, 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 no. This man is collecting clothes. This man is collecting a dress. He doesn't have any time to take your teddy bear with him. See, So this boy said, please, please, please take this. And uh, the missionary said, no, no, it's okay. If this boy is insisting, I will take this teddy bear. And he took the teddy bear 
and he took everything all the other things and he traveled it takes you know by ship it takes more than three and a half months to reach africa where the place where he was going in congo okay so the the container which had all these clothes and all these things it traveled three and a half months and it reached congo the place in africa and when he reached there he had this whole boxes full of things it was being unloaded and there was this doctor who was actually treating some of the patients there in africa she was a missionary doctor she came up to him and she got a box full of things medical supplies and all those things she uh, with uh, clothes old clothes and everything that was given to her she took this box to her camp and she was teach, uh, treating the patients and among them was a small girl whose mother was very very sick the mother was there on the on the table and the doctor was about to do an operation on her so the other people came and told the doctor you know this girl is crying because she wants to see the mother there is nothing that we can quieten this girl how we can't bring her to quieten down to soft, stop her crying how do we do that so the doctor was so upset doctor said just check in the box there is something for the for the girl maybe a dress or a toy and everybody checked inside the box and to the surprise they found what the teddy bear you see and they took out the teddy bear and gave it to this girl and the girl stopped her crying throughout the time when the doctor was doing the operation on the mother the girl kept playing with the toy and she did not disturb the doctors at all the operation was over the mother was came up you know out of that and they still had this girl you know not crying because she was playing with the teddy bear imagine that for this young girl to have that teddy bear one boy sacrificed three and a half months before and god made it travel all the way across the ocean so that this little child would have a teddy bear see so what the little that we give we don't know how god is going to use it but god is going to use it to bless the lives of many so what matters is the heart to give you see so when this little boy gave his little lunch five loaves of fi- uh, bread and two fish it became a blessing to 5000 people so blessed is the mother who who packed the lunch and gave blessed is the boy who sacrificially gave it to andrew blessed is andrew because he found the boy and gave the lunch to jesus blessed is jesus because he was able to bless it and give it to 5000 people so what little you give to god god can cause it to be a blessing to many second thing we learn is that god is the one who provides for all our needs anything it is food clothing shelter god gives to all our needs okay not for all our wants you know we are all greedy people we want more and more you know when you are sitting at home even when the rain is going on like this we would like to have ice creams how much ice cream not one cup you would like so many ice creams okay but the problem is that that's our greed you no know? it's not okay one ice cream is okay but then having all the ice creams that is greed god does not promise us that he will meet all our greed um, meet... um sir can you say the first thing first thing first thing is that if you give whatever little you give to god god can use it to be a blessing to many people second thing god provides for all our needs not for all our greed okay you might have many many things you might want but god is not there to provide all that god wants to provide all you need what is our basic need our basic need is food clothing shelter clean air and water you know all these things god said i will provide depend on me trust in me i will provide if god is our father just like how our father and mother provide things for us god will provide our needs he promises us that we can trust him on that but for all our greed no god is not going to provide for all our greed i want the best car in the world i want the most uh, costliest dress in the world no god is not going to provide that god is going to provide you with good clothes not the best of you know what the world gives so god provides for all our needs not for our greed and finally whenever you get anything give thanks to god before you enjoy it you have got it because god has blessed you with it there are many people who haven't got it so be mindful don't forget the giver when you enjoy the gift so thank the lord before you eat food hum maybe you eat food four times a day some people during the lockdown they eat six times a day that's okay as long as you eat it before you eat it give thanks to god okay so make it a practice in your life to give thanks to god before you eat it bless the hands oh lord that made that food for you no so that they would give you more food right so keep on praying and thanking god before every meal and final lesson don't waste anything especially food right don't waste anything there might be somebody who is more needier than you 
so maybe your old clothes you know you don't want to wear a clothes a dress for maybe 2 years after 2 years you'll say oh that's an old dress i don't wear it anymore if you have dresses like that in your cupboard there are many people who don't have even one dress to wear so if you would give out those dresses those people can also dress no so don't waste anything no matter what you have if you have two of something share one okay that's something that we can do don't waste anything share it one time you know we were having need for bibles we wanted to give out bibles to people whom we were ministering to and we had very less money to buy new bibles so what i what we advertised was you know if you have more than one bible in your house a bible that you are not using please give it so that we can give it to somebody else and you won't believe how many bibles came in that time people looked at their shelves bookshelves and they found so many bibles which they were not using and they found out all these bibles and they collected it there was like hundreds of bibles that we got only difference was that you know it is as some of some were as good as new some had just the name written on it we got so many bibles and we were able to distribute to so many people see so many things that you have some people don't have if you are going to waste it pass it on share it on with those people and they will also be blessed so don't waste your things especially food if you are going to pray for the food and thank god for the food take only what you would eat and eat that finish it don't waste it okay so food don't waste things that you have don't waste if you have more than two or three or one and you can afford to spare it do share it with other people who don't have it okay? that's the way we learn not to waste things so if we all learn it it will be a blessing for many many others so these are some of the lessons that we can learn from this passage so let's thank god the giver you know he has given us wisdom today he has given us understanding through the word of god let's give thanks to him for that let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you this evening for you have spoken to our hearts when we give to the lord even if small things you can multiply it and make it a blessing for many many people help us oh lord not to waste anything that you give us we are accountable to you for everything that you bless us with help us to share it with those who are in need thank you oh lord for your promise that you meet all our needs but you don't meet all our greed help us oh lord to desire the right things and when you give it to give thanks to you thank you this day for teaching us this word help us to practice this every day of our lives in jesus precious name we pray amen